ecosystems and communities to climate change, then we must support, yet they only provide a fraction of the social threat to marine biodiversity. Because the fishing takes place in the world's most It is uh, my pleasure to be here today in this group to share our unique challenges and best practices relating to small-scale fisheries. I'm delighted to be speaking after President uh, Remengo Sao, as Palau's challenge is also Fiji's challenge. Our common challenge here tonight, therefore, is to change perception for the better and ultimately understand the important role that coastal fisheries play in achieving SDGs. I wish to emphasize that um, the future of life below water depends on the life above water. Let me repeat that. The future of life below water depends on the life above water. It depends on us, all of us, and importantly, on the choices that fishers and local communities make to manage their own fisheries. The choices we make are not simple. However, Fiji is committed to help its own communities to improve the sustainability of their coastal fisheries. We have always worked closely with rural communities and traditional systems as we set national management policies and programs. For instance, government works in close collaborations with the Fiji locally managed marine area, FLEMA, to empower the communities with the necessary tools to manage their own resources. To mark Fiji's core presidency role at this week's UN Oceans Conference, Fiji is pledging a voluntary commitment on delivering improved coastal fisheries management services in Fiji by 2020, whereby the Fiji government, partnering with Fiji locally managed uh, marine areas of Flema, the Secretariat of the Pacific Community, Wildlife Conservation, World Wildlife Fund for Nature, J Justin uh, Hunter Pearls, and the University of the South Pacific, to contribute towards the implementation of uh, targets under SDG 14.2, 14.4, 14.7, and 14b. Under this commitment, some of the actions to be undertaken include the strengthening of our capacity in coastal fisheries management at all levels through effective partnerships. At the national level, we are now on the final stages of reviewing and formalizing the national fisheries policy which would encompass development and management of three main subsectors, which are coastal fisheries, offshore fisheries, and of course aquaculture, all of which would have separate sets of implementation frameworks. We are also finalizing our oceans policy framework, which we hope to launch in the not too distant future. Why is uh, coastal fisheries so important to all Fijians? simply because there is an increasing concern among fishery stakeholders in Fiji that many important coastal fishery resources are being overexploited, leading to significant declines in abundance of supply. These diminish, diminishing resources include many species of finfish, beach dimmer, giant clams, and other invertebrates that are important to Fijians for food and, of course, for cash income. The direct contribution of coastal fishing to the GDP of Fiji is about uh, 73 million Fijian dollars, which is only about 25% of revenue generated from the offshore fisheries sector. An estimated 12,000 people are employed directly in coastal fishing, which represents about 1.5% of the total population, and which is 23 times more than the number employed in the offshore fisheries sector. At the national level today, we are now undertaking a more accurate approach to accurately determine the value of the small scale sector. 
Aside from being a major provider to national food security, small-scale fisheries has an economic value well above what we previously knew. It is a major national economic sector with huge potential for growth, but needs to be established and accurately and be consistently reported as a major economic contributor. Fiji's coastal fisheries are crucially important for our country. An estimated 27,000 tons of fish is produced from coastal fishing, and the associated contribution to GDP, food, and employment potential is huge. Fijians, on average, consume approximately 35 kilograms per capita of fish protein. However, this, it is greater in the coastal areas. Uh, they consume about 100 kg per capita, uh, within the coastal and the maritime communities. Although habitat destruction, increased pollution, and siltation can be contributing factors, excessive or unchecked harvesting is the major cause of these declines. And as stipulated previously, the overarching impacts of climate change would drive natural resources and associated coastal ecosystems to a worst case scenario. I like the opening statement by the President of Palau that this week is not about today, it's about the future. Sustainable development uh, was defined way back in the early 80s here in the United Nations as meeting the needs and aspirations of today without compromising those of the future. So we are here not for today but for the future and this is why it's so important particularly to Fiji and the small island developing states of the Pacific. And there is no time to waste. The challenges we face in coastal fisheries, the threats to our livelihoods, our food security, and our ecosystems are being accelerated. The impacts of climate change is like fuel on fire. Our countries that depend heavily on coastal fisheries for food, economic security, and traditional culture are at a particular risk from challenges in productivity and movements and fish movements. The loss of critical habitats, such as uh, coral reefs and mangroves, will make worse the impacts on tropical fisheries and make coastal communities more vulnerable. And we know that substanti substantial declines of tropical fisheries are projected in climate change scenarios. The future has to be different, and we will make it so. We will make it so by working together. So in response to President Remengesar's request, Yes, Fiji will join in working towards gaining support for GRISPR's small-scale fisheries group. Thank you. So that we can help build a blue, resilient communities across our islands and this planet. To borrow from my Prime Minister's vision for COP23, we are all vulnerable and we all need to act now. Thank you and for your attention. <laughs>